Good day, class, and welcome to the syllabus review for Psych, Tests, and Measurements, Psych 390, Section D1. My name is Dr. Anthony Hubert. I'm your instructor for this term. This class is held entirely online. We do not meet in person. My office is located in the Lions Science Building 232A. I have virtual office hours on Mondays and Wednesdays from 3 to 5 p.m. And actual office hours where I have physical presence Tuesdays and Thursdays from 2 to 4 p.m. My phone number is located there. You can see it's 910-672-2611 and email address ahubert at uncfsu.edu. Now, for this particular presentation, I'll go over key items in the syllabus that you should be aware of. Uh, first, disability student services. If you have a disability or think you have a disability, to please contact the Center for Personal Development and the Spalding Building, room 155 on the first floor, phone number 910-672-1203. And also the Title IX coordinator who's there to protect students against various forms of misconduct, including sexual misconduct. Jessica Tuttle is the current Chief Title IX coordinator. She's located in the Barber Building, Office 242, phone number 672-2325. And the email address, though, for Title IX issues is also located there, titleix at uncfsu.edu. If you have any concerns regarding these topics, please review the syllabus carefully and act accordingly. Now for the course description for Psych 390. This is a survey of the major methods of evaluating and comparing psychological and physical abilities, including methods of measurement, basic statistical concepts relative to evaluation, and applications of psychological testing. The prerequisite for this course is Psych 233 or Statistics. Kaplan, 2018, Psychological Testing, Principles, Applications, and Issues in the Ninth Edition by Cengage Learning is the required textbook for this course. Students are expected to have or own access to a copy of the required textbook and are required to read all assigned readings by the dates identified on the course schedule. Additional readings and activities required for the course will be made available on Canvas. Student Learning Outcomes. Upon completion of this course, as indicated by adequate performance on examinations, writing assignments following APA guidelines, and scholarly communication in forms that demonstrate abstract reasoning and critical thinking skills, students will be able to generally be familiar with the scope and history of psychological tests, be conversant with statistical aspects of psychological tests and measurements, be aware of the importance of the key tasks of writing and evaluating test items and issues related to test administration. Be familiar with the application principles related to testing, including interviewing techniques. And specifically, review and discuss empirical findings related to the analysis evaluation of psychological tests. Demonstrate knowledge of a variety of commonly used psychological tests. Demonstrate a familiarity with test bias and its controversy, and be conversant with current and future trends in psychological testing. Mastering Student Learning Outcomes. We suggest the following. Read and take notes on the identified chapters of the textbook, associated supplemental lecture notes, and any supplemental reading material. Two, view and take notes on identified videos. Three, gather and organize relevant information to utilize for understanding material. Four, create a summary of key points document to aid in studying for chapter quizzes and module tests. Five, gather and organize relevant information from the completion of course essay assignments. Six, complete discussion forms and other campus related assignments. Seven, communicate with fellow students on identified topics via discussion forums. Eight, study for quizzes and tests. And of course, number nine, ask questions.
The course components for our course, there are several. We have unit exams, chapter quiz, quizzes or homework quizzes, the psychological test critique, and psychological test annotated bibliography, and then the for formal discussion forums. The unit exams will account for 35% of your final grade. Chapter quizzes, 30%. The psychological test critique, as well as the annotated bibliography, will account for 20%. And the formal discussion forums will account for 15%. The overall letter grade for the course completion will be based on the average points from the activities listed above as they are weighted. The following system will be used to assign the letter grade. 90 to 100% A, 80 to 89 B, 70 to 79 C, 60 to 69 D. Now let's look a little bit more carefully at the forum formal discussion forums. The formal discussion forums, in your initial reply or post, give a complete answer to each of the questions to being asked. As a general guideline, write about seven to ten sentences or more in answering to each question. Put all of your answers in this initial reply or post. Do not create separate replies for each question. So in that initial post, you are there to address the question or questions that I pose to you. Then, look at other students' comments. Pick at least two comments to reply to in a meaningful way, making sure that you, rep you reply on this for several days. For example, I don't want everything in one day, like your post, as well as all your replies in one day. Uh, try to make it on at least two separate days. So you post on the first day, and then on the other day, you reply to to other posts by fellow students, or you can do it over three days. But just so that you're not seemingly rushing and doing it all in one day. Unfortunately, I'm trying to make sure that we can avoid that particular behavior. Now, when you are replying to someone else's post, express yourself and explain your reaction to what that other student had said. Again, as a general guideline, write about four sentences or more to reply to that student's post. Now, in order to participate in the discussion throughout the time it is active, an ideal pattern is one in which you post a reply answering all the questions on that first day or so, and then on several other days, make those two replies to other students. Now, the other item that I want to go over real quickly is the annotated bibliography assignment. Some of you may have done annotated bibliography before. Uh, here you'll have the topic be a psychological test that you will select. And so some of the things is I provide you several links here online to access psychological tests that are out there. You should not have to pay for any psychological test here. I'm asking you to find a psychological test which is free of charge. And here are some of the links that will allow you to do that. Tests and measurements for the social sciences, full text tests online, the very first one here. And then we have social personality psychology questionnaire instrument compendium. And then we have psychological tools. So these would be ways in which you can hunt down a psychological test that may be of interest to you. And you can find them too by doing Google searches as well. Again, you should not have to pay for any of these psychological tests that I'm asking you to locate. Once you've located a psychological test, what you will then do is try to find peer-reviewed articles about that particular psychological test. And that's what the annotated bibliography assignment is about. So using the various psychological test databases, you select a psychological test of interest and then locate at least five peer reviewed articles that employ that chosen psychological test. You should complete a thorough review of the articles, then following the format uh, of the annotated bibliography template that's provided to you, complete that assignment. You highlight the purpose of the research as well as the purpose of the test and interesting findings in psychological test properties as part of the assignment. And this should be communicated in those articles. Here is the link to the search engine that will allow you to find those peer reviewed sources. I know some of you are probably old hats at this already, but I want to make sure that everyone's on equal footing here. So I provided to you the link and a way in order to search for those peer reviewed sources. So you would type in this search here 
and search everything box here. You put it in this little long sp space here where it says search articles, books, journals, and more. Type in whatever psychological test that you have found. And what you're looking for now are articles about that particular psychological test. You'll make sure you click full text, so you want the complete article. And you also want to make sure you check peer-reviewed or scholarly only. We only want to look at peer-reviewed sources. So you put in the name of the psychological test, select full text and peer-reviewed, and click search, and then a bunch of articles will pop up, and you're to select five of those articles to write your annotated bibliography on. There's also going to be a rubric that I'll be utilizing that's also uh, within your syllabus to get familiar with it that I'll be looking for and utilizing as I grade that particular assignment. Now, on Canvas, and I'm sure you're already on Canvas because you're watching this video, uh, you access it through modules. Okay, that's the best way to access this information. Go through modules. And then there you'll see at the very top here, APA resources and videos, and then psychological test databases and accessing uh, research articles and so on and so forth. And then we have just underneath there, uh, designated by arrow number two, we have module one, where we have module one going from August 11th to September 11th. Okay, you click onto that and it'll take you to this. Uh, more detailed information, uh, more information than the syllabus schedule provides. The syllabus schedule provides a really big basic overview. There's more details on your Canvas site as you can see here. Uh, the far left column we have the week. So here with number one we look at August 11th through August 14th. Uh, the chapter notes and key topics there is going to be about orientation and a welcome to the course. And the assignments as indicated by arrow two here are the welcome and course introduction forum. And you can see in parentheses there has 8 slash 14, that means August 14th due date. We have the Syllabus Review Fall 22 Key Points video, and that's what you're watching now. And then we have the APA Resources Module, Please Review Before the APA Quiz. So you look at those articles, I mean those resources there. And then once you have that little bit under hat, you can then go ahead and take the brief APA Citation Quiz. It's very generic, uh, not too big of a deal. And you have at least two opportunities to take that to highlight, uh, to uh, optimize uh, your score, that is. Okay, you can see August 15th to 21st, we look at Chapter 1. You can see highlighted underneath chapter one introduction there is something that says Kaplan PPT and those are copies of the PowerPoint slides for that particular chapter. Going over to assignments and activities we see there is a psychological test overview video uh, that you can observe and then you can see chapter one quiz uh, August 21 the due date there for first chapter quiz. For those chapter one quiz and chapter quiz homeworks you can access them work on them and then save them for later and resume them before you submit them for uh, grading uh, then we go to August 22nd to August 28th chapter 2 norms and basic statistics for testing okay we see there's several videos there uh, Z scores the percentile video normal distribution introduction to big data is uh, a key thing there the introduction to big data is uh, this thing that will be part of your uh, Why Big Data uh, formal form that will be due on August 28th. So that's going to be the second form uh, for this particular course. So that gives you a little bit of a layout of how it really looks. This is the top of the first module. Uh, and then we go to the bottom of the first module where it looks at uh, September the 6th to September 11th where we look at chapters 4 and chapter 5 in that last week uh, of reliability and validity. Uh, and then we have some videos for there as well to help highlight some of the learning and information to help sort of put it into perspective. Uh, the ones that I highlight in yellow are the ones I really want you to see. I think you probably could see all of them. Uh, the videos are rather short in nature. They really do add to the material. Uh, so, and then finally, uh, September 11th, at the very bottom, we have exam number one, uh, which will open uh, usually on Friday before the due date of the exam. So, uh, the Friday before before September 11th, this will open and be available to you until September 11th, so you can go ahead and take that particular exam. Uh, it's not live yet, but normally what I will do is provide 
to you uh, study guides for the particular exam. So uh, well before the exam opens, uh, look to see that study guide will become highlighted and there'll be a study guide there for you for that first exam and hopefully uh, uh, remaining exams as well, uh, all four exams that we'll be taking. Okay, participation and expectations. Students are required to attend classes by logging on to Canvas regularly and actively participating in all these class activities. Topics for discussion will be posted regularly on the discussion board, uh, and students are expected to contribute to the discussion of these topics. Uh, it is very important that you actively participate, particularly early on. If you do not participate early on and I don't see any participation, then I have to provide an FN grade, which will drop you from this course, which can have some very severe consequences a little bit later. So please participate and demonstrate that you're participating in this course as soon as you can. Students will also be expected to spend at least six hours per week engaging in academic activities outside the Canvas classroom. Those activities include reading the textbook, and posted articles, studying for quizzes, and so on. These are those items that we discussed already about mastering the student learning outcomes. And then academic honesty. Academic honesty is required for student success. Acts of dishonesty should be avoided, such as acts of including cheating, plagiarism, misrepresentation, fabrication of information, and assisting others in completing such acts during any portion of this course. The consequences of such acts can be quite severe. One of the reasons that I provide early on the APA resources to you is to make sure that you're not um, uh, unintentionally doing something that may be seen as plagiarism. I want to make sure that you understand how it is when you get information or ideas or concepts from somebody that you can properly cite them. Uh, even in your forms, in your discussion forms, you should do that as well. And I encourage you to do research above and beyond what we have available to us so that you can cite somebody's work and properly cite it in APA format. That is a positive. You get some bonus points for that, for doing that type of work. So it's important for you to understand if you continue in, in academia, uh, going to graduate school, you need to get familiar and more familiar with these techniques and ideas. And finally, just to tell you about how important the syllabus can be to you, uh, the syllabus is a great source of information. Uh, I can't have everything in there, but it has enough to at least get you started. I want to highlight the assignment schedule. Uh, on your Canvas site, they're going to have a lot more detailed information because there's a lot more space available to you. But for a good overview to keep yourself on track for the major assignments and activities, the camp, I mean, the, the syllabus schedule provides you a good overview for that. Here we have the first two modules outlined for us. This is half the course here. Uh, it shows us all these assignments and activities as well as the due dates for those assignments. Make sure you can keep on track. So uh, there should not be any time where you don't know when something is due. It's listed in the Canvas site as well as listed on your syllabus. All right, that's it for now. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them uh, for me uh, on the discussion forum for this particular uh, video. Thank you very much. Bye.